and welcome back to the live series podcast brought to you by Amicus. This is the podcast that gives you insight into the life and role of tech leaders all over the world. Today I'm joined by CTO Benjamin Schneider. Thank you for coming on Benjamin. How are you doing? I'm good Heather, how are you? Yeah I'm pretty good. I know we were just chatting we were saying how it's kind of that time of the year when it's super bright outside but also really cold so I'm nice and happy in the warmth of the office today so um, yeah that's, that's pretty good and I'm chuffed to have you on today as well like Again, when we spoke previously, it's been really interesting chatting with you and I'm looking forward to, to diving in today. So um, if you just kind of, for anyone that's maybe not heard of your work or anything, just want to maybe talk us through your experience so far. Yeah, sure. Happy to. So my name is Benjamin Schneider. I'm based in Berlin, Germany, and my journey goes back a very long time to when I was about seven or eight years old. I got my first PC um, and yeah, as any child that age usually does, I used it a lot to play games, but at some point I also got quite interested in, Hey, can I maybe make my own little games? Like what, what's more, what more can I do with this machine? And, um, that's when I, yeah, journeyed into, into programming or back then it was more about, you know, wouldn't call it programming, but more like breaking my computer so much that I actually had to, uh, reinstall my windows so often that until today, I remember my windows 95 license key by heart. So that tells you something about what I did with that poor PC, but yeah, um, did, did some programming there uh, in, in, I think, BASIC was like pre-installed on it, um, later some Pascal, C, C++. Um, and then, yeah, it was was sort of uh, clear early on that that's what my passion is and, and what I would want to do also later um, in my professional career. And then I did that, studied in the computer sciences, got my first jobs, um, started out as a, out as a backend engineer. Then uh, at that time, it was largely PHP and MySQL. Um, later, also learned some JavaScript, so client-side programming, um, Node, like did sort of the full stack uh, journey. Um, and at some point during, I think, 2016, I got curious about leadership positions and, um, yeah, went into the training program and uh, started out as a manager of one team, then later two teams, three teams, then managed managers and uh, now in my recent gig I'm, I'm the CTO of a startup here in Berlin and uh, yeah it has been a a great adventure so far. I love that I love that I know you said that you uh, you got curious about about leadership um why why did you get into leadership? Yeah that's a good question I mean I was always a very sort of shy and introvert kid and I think that's also why I why I sort of got so much into spending time with my computer because I didn't really want to spend time with other kids. <laughs> I was just overwhelmed by the sensation of that. Um, so I spent a lot of time with my computer and thought, you know, that's that's going to be my life, uh, not talking to anybody, just sitting there writing code. That sounds really, really cool. But then when I started, you know, working with teams with other people, because that's, that's what we do at the end of the day uh, in, in professional development environments, I realized the, the human in the equation is actually quite important. Uh, I cannot just write the code the way I want to. And, um, you know, my colleagues will participate, will contribute, and we have to get along. We have to agree on standards and we have to agree on what are we actually working on. And then there's a business who wants to know by when is it shipped and when is it done and all that. So yeah, I realized at some point, like, hey, you know, I cannot cannot avoid that aspect of the of the job. If I want to be good, I also need to be able to, you know, speak to other people, uh, relate to them. And um, yeah, I did that and, and opened up a little bit. Um, was sort of a, a challenge back then to me. As I said, I was quite the introvert, but um I always liked to challenge myself. I also had some really good mentors and yeah, over time, I came to actually really, really appreciate that aspect of the job so much so that I thought like, hey, you know, maybe this is where my true passion lies. Like not just about making computers efficient and, and writing good code, but um, going step back and looking at the bigger picture of uh, who are the people coming together, who write that code, what kind of product are we creating, what kind of uh, sort of pain points are we solving for customers? And this is when I got curious about, okay, how can we make um, that sort of life more pleasant for, for me and my colleagues, but also more effective? How can we create um, better value quicker for our customers? And so, yeah, got curious, talked to a lot of people, you know, mentors who had been in management for quite a while and gladly got the opportunity to then try it out at some point. That's wicked. I know you, you mentioned a little bit there. You, you segued me really nicely, actually, into that into the next 
kind of part of it what I wanted to talk about in, in your experience um you you mentioned like one of the bits that you kind of get pick out of is bringing people together and kind of figuring out who's going to be building these products and who's going to kind of work best doing that right so presumably as CTO you get a lot of input on hiring processes and who's who's actually going into those teams um how or should I say what sort of things as a, a leader or what should you be considering when you're trying to build a team and I know it kind of can depend on the product and things like that but if we kind of sort of generalize a little bit like what kind of features what kind of characteristics or skills or what, what are you looking for essentially yeah so for me it's very important to to not just focus on the technical aspect and I think a lot of people talked about this already um, but also on the on the human side of things, like who are these people coming together? Are they uh, kind people? Um, do they you know respect each other? Um, is it just fun to be around them? Um, you know, do they um, do they create together with me? Obviously, an environment that makes people say, "Hey, I'm really happy with my job. I like going to work. I like working with these people." Um, if 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 that is yes, then I think I have succeeded as a leader because. We're spending all a uh, tremendous amount of time with each other. Has changed now a little bit with remote work being being sort of more present these days. But back then, when I started out, we were all coming to the office. So, you know, forty hours a week, sometimes even more. Um, I, I always wanted it to be a place where people like to come to and and also maybe go, you know, to to have dinner or drink a beer after work um, to really emphasize that socializing aspect. Because again, we spend so much time with each other. I didn't want it to be just about the job. I wanted it to be a place where, yeah, people people have a good time essentially. And I, I have a good friend who, who always said um, something along the line, lines of, um, uh, you know, happy employees uh, create sort of happy experiences for our users, right? Or make our users happy. And I truly believe in, in that. So even from a business perspective, I think if you want to look at it from, from sort of that perspective, it makes a lot of sense to have happy employees and have people coming together uh, who have a good time because the likelihood of them, you know, producing good output is then even higher. A hundred percent. And I like that you're talking about happiness kind of instinctively. That says a lot about you, I think, as a, as a leader, which is a really good thing. Um, In terms of like, so let's talk happiness at work. Like in terms of, kind of getting together that work-life balance for your team um how how do you go about implementing that and make sure that they're all getting a, a healthy dose of each yeah. for me the most important thing is to be a good listener in a sense right to not just sort of in terms of listening to what people say but also seeing what kind of signals they give off right even just um uh, the, the way you know how do they come in in the morning are they uh, do they look tired or do they look energized right that already gives you quite a good hint about um, the situation in your team if everyone comes in tired all the time something might be going on right individually it could always be that someone just has you know is going through a rough time but um, if you feel that your entire team or your entire organization is sort of suffering from from these kind of signals then you know that something is going on so I was I was always very sort of um looking into these kind of cues like how, how are people how, how are they doing right how are they behaving but then also what are they saying so but being there for people um and and creating an atmosphere where they can open up and also talk about you know if something is not going too well in the team at work but also maybe personally as long as they want to share right and and being that kind of example in also sort of sharing my situation right showing that even a, a manager is not hasn't figured everything out right i have my my strengths and end weaknesses, uh, you know, exactly as everybody else has and making that transparent and showing everybody that, you know, sometimes there's something that I don't know, or sometimes I'm having a bad day and I'm struggling, opens up that, that conversation because then people know like, Hey, these are things I can talk about uh, with, with my team and with my manager. Um, and then people are much more likely to, to open up and actually have these conversations and be open and honest about things. Yeah, creating a safe space, isn't it, essentially, and just yeah. ensuring that everyone feels comfortable enough to communicate as much as they want to um, and, and to not force anything with your team is really important as well, isn't it? Um, in terms of yourself, then, how as a leader, because I feel like the, the further up the ladder you get, kind of the more, not expected, that's the wrong word, but more kind of assumed that your work-life balance is probably going to get 
a little bit more unbalanced the higher up the ladder you get um do you think that's fair and and, and how do you kind of implement that you are always getting work-life balance as a leader yeah i think that's true at least in my own journey i have seen that right obviously everybody is a bit different but i can speak from my own experience that you know the more responsibilities i had and with managing a team the responsibilities grow exponentially um the less I actually was able to also shut off my brain and think about these things, right? So even after work at night, um, you know, I thought about, you know, is the team happy, for example, right? Am I bringing in the right people? If we were going through a rough spot, it, it kept me up at night and I was trying to find solutions, right? Uh, kind of trying to make everybody happy, which is impossible. But um, I realized that it, it's really difficult to switch off, right? During the time when I was still coding, I mean, sometimes, yeah, I was thinking about a problem that I wasn't able to solve throughout the day, but only in rare cases. Most of the time I was able to close my laptop and then be like, okay, it's the weekend, let's have some fun. Monday, open it again and, you know, continue where I left off. But the kind of problems that, yeah, you face as a, as a manager, as a leader, um, are different and are, at least to me, very personal in a sense, right? I have responsibility over over people, at least to a certain degree of, of a big aspect of their life. And I want to make sure that, yeah, um, they're, they're, they're feeling good and they feel fulfilled and productive and happy. And at the same time, you have the yeah obligation to the business to, to actually ship value, to make money, right? And all of that coming together, it keeps your, your brain quite busy. So it was, um, uh, and I, I'm still learning this, right? I still haven't figured it out completely. But it, it was an exercise for me to, to try to find a way around that, right? To be able to actually switch off at the end of the day and not think about these things so much. And I think at least that this is one of those aspects that make this, um, make these kind of leadership positions um, quite a bit exhausting at times because it, it is really difficult to switch off. Yeah, and that's it. I think as well, if the if the culture's not quite right, or I guess it, I guess it's kind of up to a leader to implement their own kind of boundaries, isn't it, with their team in terms of getting contacted and things like that on the time off. And <clears throat> it is a tricky one to be fair, because you want to be there for them, but you also, you know, you, you do need to set those boundaries, don't you? Um, let's just jump back a little to 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 what we were to what we were previously covering of approaching your team's kind of men mental well being. I know you said that it's important to create a kind of environment where they can feel comfortable. How do you say someone, for example, is having a little bit of a rough time and it's becoming a little bit obvious? How do you approach that with whilst kind of maintaining their dignity and also their privacy? Um, but, you know, say you, you, something needs to be said for whatever reason. How do you kind of approach that? Yeah. Well, first, as I said, it's very important to to set up these kind of, uh, th this kind of environment from the, from the get go, right? I don't want to be that kind of manager who always talks about work and then suddenly if something goes wrong, then I'm like, hey, what's going on with you, right? Do you have problems then? Because then it sounds quite confrontational, right? It's like, oh, normally you don't care, but now you care because I'm not delivering, right? That's not the kind of atmosphere that I want to set. So rather than that, I make it a part of, you know, we, we have these one-on-ones, for example, with our with our employees, um, that each and every time I ask, how are you doing, right? Is there anything I can help you with? Is there anything that you're struggling with? Make it a normal part of day-to-day of -day operations, so to say, right? To talk about these things. And then when the moment comes that I see, you know, something is going on, then it's, it's not a surprise anymore. And it's just quite natural to talk about it. Sometimes even so that the people come uh, and tell me these things even before I ask, right? Because they know they can open up about it. So that makes it um, already already much easier. And then when something comes up, at least in my experience, it depends on people, right? For some people, it's it's a bit more difficult to to open up. But most of the time, when something happened and I was approaching people, and again, I try to be very non-confrontational, asking questions like, "Hey, I made this observation. Um, what is happening? Is there anything I can help you with?" then usually people don't have a problem sharing, right? If I set up, again, this um, this environment before and I myself am opening up all the time by also saying when I'm struggling, having a bad day, when I don't know something, right? These kind of situations, then these conversations usually go very, very smoothly. Never experienced much of an issue there. I love that. Yeah, I do love that. It does sound like you're doing it right. Um, in terms of your... Because when we're talking about kind of work-life balance and mental health, I think a lot of the time when people kind of, you can say that you have perfect work-life balance, right? And that you're getting 
all of the time that you need at home but you can still have like fairly poor mental health with that so I think like a lot of like corporate um sort of mindsets usually kind of forget that that they are two separate things like having mental health and having work-life balance um so obviously we've, we've talked a little about work-life balance but in terms of and, and being able to have that as a leader but in terms of kind of maintaining your mental health obviously if you've got kind of again to use that example of say having a team member or team members who are going through something how can you kind of almost switch off from that how do you manage your own mental health and not not let it affect you but how do you how do you essentially just just carry through that um not only for the sake of your team but for yourself as well yeah again um it's something that i haven't quite figured out yet right and and i and i quite think that no one has uh completely it's it's a journey for all of us and quite a roller coaster right right that's that's how life is and i felt that especially in the first you know 10 years of, of being an adult so basically my 20s and also beginning of my 30s um, I spent most of my energy on, on figuring exactly that out right um, how can I live a, a happy and fulfilled life um, how I how can I be you know content and how can I be um, yeah not sort of needing you know one access after the next one shopping spree after the next one new watch after the next but how can I be happy with with what I have, right? Um, how can I make sort of yeah, just just look at my life no matter what it throws at me, and and being able to navigate through it in in some kind of you know solid state. Um, still figuring that out, but I spent a lot of time on that, and, and obviously you know, and I think everybody did to some degree. I also went through my own struggles. I I suffered from depression in my early twenties. I suffered from anxiety in my mid to late twenties, and. Um, the depression sort of is well under control, but the the anxiety comes back every now and then, but I have learned to live with it, right? And I think that's what the biggest lesson for me about mental health is. There, there are always challenges, right? There are always situations that are not going nicely. There's always stuff happening, but it's a matter of how do we interpret it and, and what do we do with that information, right? Um, so yeah, and, and essentially going through these things myself um, has then also helped me to to again open up and, and and making my own feelings and my situation transparent right also to my employees actually when as i said in my in the beginning of my 20s when i was suffering from depression i mean i was out for quite a while right as as most people do when they when they have something like that i think i wasn't going to work for like two or three months i wasn't a sick leave that long right and then before i started coming back i already thought like my god what what am i going to tell people right they want to know what what happened and I wouldn't have any explanation for why I was out so long, you know. So I thought, let's just be honest. Let's let's tell people what happened. And I was quite um, surprised by by actually the, the the positive kind of reactions that I got. I was expecting people to be like, well, oh, depression, okay, um, because it's still sort of a bit negatively connotated these days. But actually, what happened was that I got people telling me. How you know what? Uh, I, I had depressions myself a couple of years ago, right? And then um, you were able to to find an ally of sorts, right? And talk about these things and, and talk about um, you know tools, what helped, what didn't help, and um, that already helped me to get through it quite a bit. And that moment then showed me that you know a lot of people are actually going through that. I was not, I was not um, unique, or it's not a rare occurrence. It happens very, very often. Depression, anxiety, burnout, bore out, right? There are so many things. That, that you would categorize as mental health issues um, that, you know, apparently everyone goes through it. So why not open up and, and being honest about it and support each other, right? Not just being open for the sake of sharing, but for the sake of uh, supporting each other. If someone is struggling, talks about having depression or anxiety, A, as a manager, it helps me to understand their situation better and and it helps me to, you know, adjust my way of approaching them or, you know, how I plan them in into the, the future development, for example, right? How I treat them, how much time I spend with them. If I go maybe more from an operational um, uh, approach to a, to, a co to a coaching approach, right? So it helps me in that regard. And it has been very, very valuable and useful again obviously not everyone opens up that way and I, and I don't want to force anybody right no one no one should feel forced I don't want to also create an atmosphere where people feel like oh I need to be constantly oversharing what I'm feeling not at all but I give them an invitation to talk about these things both ways 
Yeah, that's brilliant. It's it's really I think it's quite profound, especially when um I think one of the I I I've spoken quite a few times on the podcast about this, but I think there's such a underrated value um from a team's perspective when their kind of leader or manager uh, shows vulnerability. Um and that can come in any kind of forms, but I think it, it genuinely benefits um the leader just as much as it does the team when when vulnerability comes on the comes to the table because um, that it does open it right up, like you said, and it's it's so important as well. Um, I briefly sort of mentioned earlier about how kind of climbing the ladder um, can kind of affect your uh, sort of work life balance, but in terms of affecting your mental well being, do you think that it does? Um, and particularly in tech as well, um, it's quite a busy industry for lack of a better phrase. But um, would <laughs> yeah. you say? <laughs> Um, would you say um, that that it does? Do you think that's a fair statement? And and how how you know how do people kind of deal with that? If so, so in regards to climbing the ladder, does it have an effect? So I think I answered this earlier. So yes, absolutely. Maybe not for everybody, right? But for me, it did, and I can totally see why. Because again, the responsibilities become bigger, right? There's also a bigger amount of pressure if you're in middle management from both sides. Like people on top of you want something, people underneath you want something from you, right? And you have to navigate that somehow. Why it is so predominant in tech, to be honest, I have no idea. It's something that I, I think about a lot. I've never worked in another industry, right? Sometimes I talk people from other industries, but it seems they are struggling the same way. Maybe maybe in, in tech, we have gotten used to talking about it more than in other industries because we have this, um, you know, we have these things in agile development. We do retrospectives and, and we do one-on-ones and all that, right? Where it is a lot about, you know, what's going on, what went well, what didn't went well. It's a lot about self-improvement. We do seminars and, and we go to coaches and all that to become better versions of ourselves individually and as a team. So maybe we're just more able to reflect on our own well-being and able to then also talk about it and verbalize it than, than other people are who haven't made these kind of experiences. I think it's more something like that because fundamentally we're all the same people. We're the same human beings. So I don't see a reason why we should be struggling more or less than others. Yeah, no, I think that's a really good point that you made. I, to be fair, it's, it's it's cool that you mentioned um chatting with your friends in other industries too, because my next question was going to be, how do you think it compares to other industries? Um, I think it, I've not really thought about it in that sense of kind of the dependent on what kind of methodology you have or what kind of how however the team functions, that can essentially mean that you're talking about it a lot more or that you're just communicating a, a hell of a lot more. Um, than other industries might do um, in say like you know if you've got your daily stand-ups then they might just have like a, a one hour week meeting or something like that um, so yeah it's going to come up more isn't it and and it is interesting to to kind of consider and um, yeah it's interesting when you say as well comparing it to to, to other industries um, it's it's kind of hard to know obviously um, I've only ever worked in marketing um, and so and you've only obviously ever worked in tech so we're not probably the uh, the, the most ideal people to 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 answer that, I suppose. But I, th- I think you are right. I feel like the the fact that it's talked about more in tech is is, is probably where it leans towards. Um, I think climbing the ladder in any kind of industry definitely does affect um, work life balance, and then in turn whether that the result of that is 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 less efficient kind of mental well being, or whether it's just something that happens alongside it. Um, I'm not too sure, but it's it's definitely something that's super important to talk about. Um, and I'm and I'm so pleased that we I feel like we've only skimmed the surface really. Um, on this on this episode, so I'd love to I'd love to dive in a little bit deeper on another episode with you, um, uh, if we can. Um, and we'll have a catch up or something in six months' time, and that'll be be lovely to get to check in and see how you and your team are doing. Um, so yeah, so in terms of I've just got kind of one more question really for you. Um, in terms of because normally I say, what advice do you, pe- do you have for people who want to kind of climb the tech ladder? But what advice do you have specifically for people who are looking to have a more conscious leadership style of other people in their team and of themselves? Yeah, very good question. Um, at least my personal lesson was to first just do it, right? Again, as I said, um, if, if you're plagued with anxiety and all that, right, there's a lot of thinking about what can go wrong, right? Um, and I still find myself doing that every now and then, but really you should learn to focus on 
what can go well, right? And then most of the time things go well, at least in the aspect that even if you fail, you've learned a lot at the end of the day, right? Um, during sort of climbing, climbing this ladder, um, there were so many times where I felt like, my God, you know, this is not for me. I'm not a manager. I'm not a leader. I'm struggling so much. I don't know what I'm doing. But I pushed through. And at the end of the day, looking back to those moments, those were the moments where I learned the most. When everything is comfortable, right? And, and everything is nice and shiny, then I feel like I'm stagnating because then I know already what I'm doing, right? I have figured it out and then I'm just sort of functioning. But what I want is, is learning. I want to grow, right? As, as Even as a person, I, I want to grow. I want to learn. I want to become a better version of myself. And for that, I think it's almost necessary to go through some through some struggle, right? Uh, because those are the moments when you learn most. So I would say people shouldn't be afraid of those moments. Actually, try to proactively seek them out, right? I got advice from 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 a coach uh, a long time ago that I thought was very very valuable in the sense that when you're planning your career and thinking about your next step make a step that is big enough so that there's room for you to learn and grow right but make it not so big that you're set up for failure and will just sort of fall down the stairs right choose sort of uh, a step that is that is just in a, in a nice sweet spot and that's how I try to think about, yeah, my sort of career and my own development, like all the time. And then on the other hand, what I think is also very important is be yourself. There's so many people seeking for advice of others, and there's nothing wrong in, in seeking advice. But at the end of the day, make your own decision and follow your own instincts and um, your own, uh, you know, your, your values and all that, because that makes you a genuine leader, right? And Maybe then, you know, not every company will be the right place for you. But then once you have figured out what kind of person you are, what kind of leader you are, or you want to be or become, then you can actively seek out that place that, you know, has has the right soil for you to grow in. I love that metaphor of having the right soil to grow in. I think that's lovely. That's probably the nicest, uh, the nicest metaphor we've had on the podcast so far. It's lovely to <laughs> round it off. Um, no, I think that's I think that's really wonderful advice, and especially be yourself. It, it's it's it sounds obvious, but it really isn't at all, and it's definitely in a professional environment not the easiest of things to do. I think, and for someone who wants to be a leader, it's it's super important, isn't it? So, yeah, super profound uh, episode, and I'm I'm really pleased with how this has gone. Um, and yeah, we'll definitely have another catch up soon and and dive a little bit deeper into it. Uh, because it's such a fascinating subject it's one that's very close to my heart as well um so thank you so much benjamin i really appreciate it thank you um so if you're watching on youtube you can hover over the logo in the corner i think it's that side it's i never get the side right ever um but you can hit subscribe follow us on instagram facebook linkedin twitter and tiktok head over to our website amicusjobs.com and check out all of the roles from all over the globe and go and check out the rest of these podcast episodes as well because there's quite a few of them now um, Benjamin, thank you so much again. I really, really appreciate your time. Very welcome.